In this episode of Stuck Not Broken, I'm going to be sharing with you a few clips from a recent open office hour I did. This is where participants of one of my courses come uh, to talk with me once a month, ask questions, uh, share how the course is going, and a few th different things came up that I thought were really interesting. One of those things is the process of pendulation and how that kind of naturally happens or can naturally happen in the process of grieving, something I see in therapy a lot. The second thing is about the safety state and whether that needs to be on at all times and if that's even like the goal of all this polyvagal stuff. The third thing is about imagination and using that as a safety anchor. And then I also have a clip at the end about someone sharing how their triggers or what typically are their triggers are now reduced and how building safety anchors has been a part of that. After the clips, I'm going to talk with you a bit at the end about what's going on for me and what to expect uh, coming up. Having mindfulness without having to like ground sort of your senses first and have that safety present is, is very awesome. Yeah. So I think I'm like just integrating what I'm learning from rehab and like this course, I'm like trying to like really help myself first. Um, it's kind of yeah. good timing then, huh? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you're, you're, you're totally right though trying to be mindful of what's happening within you before you're anchored in safety can be really difficult and scary. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not easy. Though. That is not easy to do to, to feel, you know, your dysregulation. Maybe you really, yeah. I think you, ha you have to be anchored in your safety state first. Yeah. And that's sort of your reason for having to master this BSA before going on to UBS, right? That's sort of your whole. Thing. Yep. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, um, it, yeah, I don't think it'd be very helpful. It might be really traumatizing. Um, did you get a, a chance to watch the UDS stuff? I did. I did. Um, yeah. Like they make so much sense. I'm really excited for the course that's coming. Um, I think something big that you really talked about was like this idea of pendulation. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that I don't know about you, but like I do on a regular basis, just like naturally, but like without a lot of mindfulness, you know, like it's sort of like, or the way I'm understanding is sort of like tapping into that sort of maybe like this regulation, this regulatory state a little bit, and then like try to slay back to safety. Um, okay good but yeah like I think I'm not able to just have a lot of mindfulness and sometimes I feel like that's maybe that that sort of pendulation it gets too big and then I'm like whoo I landed in like one state and I can't see myself that, yeah <laughs> yeah I could, I could definitely see that happening yeah, yeah. with, with yeah. people if they're if they're not having that familiarity with their safety state and knowing how to access it yeah, I could yeah. definitely pendulate one way and then not be able to swing back. Yeah. And then you kind of you kind of have to wait for it to to run its course almost like if you send yourself mm -hmm. into a panic attack or something. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for it to finish and then, well, eventually come back to it, I suppose. I find that people, I think there's a natural capacity to do so. And I, I noticed that a lot with, with my clients that are grieving. So they've lost someone and there's this seems to be this natural capacity to um, to be sad and angry and in the grieving process and if someone can be with that then I, I notice they just sort of naturally will spontaneously remember something about that person that you know brings them happiness or they'll ha feel happiness or they'll feel their safety their safety state will come on and then story follow state so they remember something positive and can share it out loud and but it seems like there, there's this natural capacity to grieve like and deep sadness and anger and mourning and whatever and then also balance it out with ah but there's this one time that this person did this thing and to smile you know and then to reflect on that and then come back to sadness and, and all the other mourning and grieving feelings and then back to appreciation and building new meaning for their life so there's this i guess the point is there's there we that's where i see it in therapy the most recognizably is when someone's grieving and really feeling their feelings, they'll kind of pendulate naturally on their own. Yeah, I think I really appreciate you 
kind of like normalize that because I think a lot of I don't know like not maybe from like therapists but like the sort of the cultural voice is kind of like oh like what safety is is like you gotta stay in safety and like you have to be like unconditionally positive you know <laughs> like yeah, it's no. you know like there this like pendulation like you said there are like people have like natural capacity to do that like right now i think i'm also in that space because even with my injury like there's a lot of grief right like there's a lot of anger it's like oh like why did this happen to me like uh you know why is this my own fault like you know a lot of like just story follows state a lot of that mm-hmm. shut um which by the way I feel like now I have more time <laughs> because I'm taking time off like I literally I'm feeling into my shutdown a lot um anyway but you know like and I also being able to come back sometimes um other times it takes a little bit more <laughs> but you know like yeah. oh able to appreciate like you know sort of like you know the things that I'm learning through this experience and then uh, relationships mm. that you know keep me going and then sort of like uh, things about myself and like reprioritizing my life and you know just sort of those sort of like cognitive sort of like you know I guess thoughts that just follow the state of like more safety I, yeah. I do yeah prime- having those like yeah they just have like pendulations these days yeah yeah it, it can happen naturally but um and it's great that you can recognize it and see it maybe after it's happening but I, even you know while it's happening you might we might be able to to notice that and really experience it and bring a little bit a little bit more mindfulness to the natural process you know right. or awareness yeah i really appreciate you like normalizing that too huh? It's important, right? It's not possible to be 100% in your safety state all the time. And I don't, I don't even know if that's the goal of all this. I kind of don't think it is. I don't mm-hmm. think that's the goal. I think that we want to be able to access it. But um, I feel like if we're, I think that if we're growing as individuals, that dysregulation is part of that. Mm-hmm. And so if, if we're always in our safety state, like what does that say about our growth potential? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that mean we're just kind of always happy or something? Like I, I can't imagine what that life would be like. I don't know if I even want that. That would mean that there's no more growth possibility. Like, does that make sense? I know, that makes total sense. And I'm also thinking like, what kind of life that person has to have, you know, like, like blissful right. ignorance, everything that's happening in the world, like they're just like, <laughs> I feel like, like okay with everything like it's like you know that's just like a lot of yeah like privilege as well as like you know like not really possible so yeah I guess you could put it that way yeah yeah I don't know I don't know what that person would look like would feel like I don't know what that life would be like you'd have to be pretty cut off or extremely accepting and empathetic and unendingly positive and I don't think that's possible yeah. and so i wasn't even thinking on like a you know what's coming at us throughout the day but i was just thinking in our potential for growth and i think if we're always challenging ourselves there's always going to be some level of of dysregulation you know, like or or mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna you know go from our safety state down to flight fight when we have new things in life that are different and are obstacles that we have to overcome and that might that might just be uh, you know, like interviewing for a new job or applying or admitting you're ready for a new job, like it could be, or exiting a relationship or whatever. Like it could be those small or big life milestones that uh, are challenges. And so, like, how can you stay 100% in your safety state through these challenges in life, right? Mm-hmm. Don't you kind of have to drop down and mm-hmm. be in some flight fight or maybe even shut down? But I think we just want to have access to safety. We don't want to lose access to it. We want to stay anchored in it. I know, I, people who, I know people who claim to always be in a positive state. And how I see it is that they're in denial and delusion. Maybe. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
And then just the whole idea of feeling your feelings would cause some level of dysregulation, you know, I would think. And discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. One of the anchors that you mentioned was sort of this like, like imagining this like alternative sort of world or like, you know, with like all kinds of creatures and like, you know. Oh, imagination, yeah. Yeah, imagination. Um, and I think this this one I'm like struggling a little bit with because, um, well, it's a little bit of uh, like complicated for me because um, like to uh, give a bit more context when I was a child, I, um, I used a lot of, I think this strategy to kind of cope. Um, there were a lot going on around me, like about my family. Um, but sort of this alternative, you know, like I would always come up with stories to tell myself. Um, but I think it was, it was very, um, it, it was a very like good coping strategy for me one way, but it was also this sort of like, mm-hmm. almost, like it has like a flight flavor to it, you know, like it's just like escape, like gotcha. escape them, um, into like an alternate kind of like reality. Um and so I'm very good at that. Um, and yeah. now I'm sort of like, okay, I'm just like, you know, it's, I love making up like a different world. Like, it, like you know, it's like a storyline in it. That's, that's what I'm really passionate about. Um, but there's also, I feel like this sort of like, oh, I want to just go into this world that I created and maybe not be in this environment, which I'm currently in. And so I was like, I don't know if that's like, grounding in a way that you know like I'm grounded in reality it definitely gives me like a safe headspace at least um, but I don't know if that's yeah yeah uh, I think there's a difference between um, avoidance and escape that's one mm-hmm. you use the word you use the word escape but when we're not trying to feel our feelings that's avoiding them right that's not exactly I want to differentiate. So escape is more when you're feeling your flight energy and you're utilizing it and you get that release and you could actually climb your polyvagal ladder. So I, I just differentiate those two words. I'm not sure how important that is, but so if you're using your thoughts to avoid what you're feeling, that's um, entertainment, that's distraction. And that's not bad. That's totally fine, especially for like a crisis moment. Right. But with building safety anchors, it's not about avoiding your feelings. It's about creating a, um, it's about creating safety. Okay. So, mm. and, and each of these little ideas that I put in there might not be a good fit for everybody. So movement might be a really big struggle for one person, whereas using their imagination is exactly what is right for them. So these are just ideas I'm putting out there. When, with the cognitive ones, there's a bunch of ideas I laid out and maybe the imagination one is not a good fit or maybe for you, it's like, it's meant something else. And so, mm-hmm. so that might be a big obstacle and maybe you rely on one of the other cognitive anchors um, instead, right? So that, that that's a possibility. But when it comes to using your imagination, it can be like, I think I had given a couple of examples of uh, Studio Ghibli movies mm-hmm. or, love- or films. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. So that's where the point is not to get lost in the story and to escape your problems. The point is to look at the colors, look at the images, hear the voices maybe, but also like that's one level of just sensory input. Mm -hmm. But the next level could be to allow yourself to feel wonder and awe, Mm -hmm. um, excitement. So they're like the imagination can bring those different experiences to us. If that makes mm-hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So it's, so it's not avoidance and entertainment. That's mm-hmm. not what we're going for. We're going for experiencing a different world potentially, but that's what it could be. But it also could be, using your imagination could be, and I think I laid this out in like one of the first lessons in BSA was using your imagination to create a safety space. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. And to and all to narrow that down a bit more, like, just to put it generally, where would you go to feel safe? That's that's kind of a big question, but we can narrow that down to where would you go to feel playfulness? And then maybe that, mm-hmm. that might create a specific image for someone. Where would you go to feel wonder? Where would you go to feel creativity? 
Um, so you can take these different feelings of safety and maybe one of those words like you latch on to is like, oh, well, yeah, if I, to feel creative, I would go to Main Street in Disneyland with mm -hmm. uh, with a canvas and paint. And that's would be my my place to feel safe, but specifically to feel creative. So I would say imagination can doesn't have to be it's given to you through a movie, but you can create it and really focus on one like what is it you want what aspect of safety do you want to feel and that mm. could be creativity that could be playfulness it could be um uh what else well uh safety well obviously safety um fun it can there be fun it could solitude say it again uh also you said wonder by which it's really amazing um also yeah. i have clarification um so did you say that like the flight energy is in a bad sort of energy to feel when maybe bad. like like yeah bad you know it's it's not something that we you know that we are you know it's it's this process of like climbing the polyvagal so like if for example like i like actually yeah i do have like created this sort of like actually call it like the play world um, and it's, you know, like this, this imaginary world, it's about the clouds, very, very playful, very, very wonderful. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I won't go into yeah. all the, my imagination, but okay. um, it's, it's really, it's a fun place. Um, okay. And, uh, but I was like, you know, I do feel like some sort of like flighty energy sometimes when I'm like, like, you know, as, as well as feeling, you know, sense of wonder and fun and curiosity and creativity with what I mean my imagination because there is this kind of like yeah flight energy that's that's definitely coming on and you know that's that what you're saying like uh, to experience that that's not necessarily bad right no it's not bad no not at all okay. it's just that's it's just a feeling I, okay yeah none, right. none, none of these things are good or bad they feel they might right. feel you know more positive or Morgan negative. That's how we would like classify them, but but they they have no inherent worth. It's just feelings. They have no good. There's no na nature doesn't assign good or bad feelings, right? They're yeah. just feelings, and they those feelings drive our body to um, or come from impulses our body has not been able to act on. Excuse me. Which more of that on more of that in UDS, right? But they're just feelings. And so having flight activation is not bad. It's just a feeling. So if you use your imagination and other feelings come in, I would encourage people as they're ready to, to just let yourself have them and to experience them. I think so that, that's one level. Another level of this though is when we use our imagination and we're feeling those feelings, I, I would ask you, not you, but in general, mm -hmm. are, are you feeling it in your real body in the moment, in the room, right? Are you actually feeling it? What what comes from your imagination or are you imagining what it would like to feel it? And then that imaginary version of you that you've created in that scenario, are they feeling it and you're just kind of remembering or thinking of, of how it would feel? Right. Do you see the difference? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you watch Studio Ghibli or when you create a scenario, I want the BSA participants to ask how does that feel in my real body mm. right now when I use my mind to create this situation how does that feel for me in my body is that bringing more safety not just can I create a character that feels safety but can I in my real body feel safety yeah I think that's that's where like my should maybe come came in and I was like oh is this bad because I was like oh like maybe I should be feeling more safety but instead I'm feeling like more of the flight energy which it may it's not like it's a lot you know it's it's I know it's like more it's climbing up the polyvagal. could be yeah no like could be yeah could be it's it's not like shut down but it's like not maybe safety yeah so it's like oh I do feel some of that flight and well body. yeah and it, it's actually very possible to yeah. access enough enough safety which we want to feel that you know great but what actually may end up happening is that because you're accessing enough safety, you're actually kind of allowing your body to start climbing its ladder. Mm. So if you're activating the safety state enough, 
some other defensive stuff may come may come up. It actually mm -hmm. may come along with it. Yeah, yeah. So that's there's, that's that's okay too. Yeah, there's definitely this activation that I've been feeling, like this like energy, this like exhilarated sort of feeling. I'm like oh, like that's that's very like you know like activated. That's very five play. It's probably yeah, like yeah. So so that that makes a lot of sense. That like I'm accessing maybe in a city, in my state that like in my imagination or in my grounding that I'm actually kind of climbing my ladder. Could be, yeah. It very well could be. And that, that's not a bad thing at all. No, um, no. I think as far as building safety anchors go, mm -hmm. I would not encourage people to like delve deeper into that, but noticing it, mm -hmm. I think is fine. Uh, being curious about it is fine, but prioritizing, can yeah. I feel this, but also can I stay in my safety state? Like that's the priority. Yeah. Unstuck in defensive states will help you to delve deeper into what's right. coming up. Yeah, but for now, I think noticing it and just mm -hmm. letting it be there, mm -hmm. but then prioritizing anchoring. Like that's that's the that's what I recommend for building safe anchors participants. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, just I wanted to yeah. ask that uh, because I think all of the other anchors so far, you know, like the environmental, like music um you know like sensory like everything has been more sort of like grounding and like in the moment and sort of not okay cool but like you know like it's but then like when i came to like cognitive you know like it's a little bit like you know we're engaging our thoughts and then for imagination i think yeah there are some like history there for me there's some like you know like yeah like there are some things that are like i'm just still working out so yeah. but i access my imagination like I'm a pretty imaginary person like I'm also like an artist so I can access that part of me pretty easily but at the same time okay. it's it's like a double kind of yeah edge. <laughs> yeah I get that yeah I started when I started looking at some videos on TRE and I know that you know when the class starts in October that I will be in safe in my home and there's nobody else is going to be there and I am safe. But the idea of the exercises, uh, because they're physical, makes me like, I, I go, oh, I'm going to be here. I think I'm going to, to feel this way. I'm going to, it's going to trigger me. It's going to do that. Yeah. And so when that came up, I, I immediately went to, oh, wait a minute, Sandra you're in your home, you're safe, nobody else is around you, there's not, it feels to me like some of nice. these ways that I'm anchoring myself, I'm able to not have to be in the experience for very long before I recognize what anchors work for me. And that's what I was explaining about the walking and being startled by yeah. the joggers coming yeah. from behind me. It used to be, and, and to a degree it still is, but not not as intense. I would startle and I could feel the adrenaline flowing and I would be in it like my whole body would be in it for hours and oh, now wow. yeah and now when it happens I can first of all access my anger about it not at them but at the what happened and and access my safety anchors in okay the, do my reality check, look around at the trees, feel the breeze. What nice. am I I'm going on a walk? And it's almost like it's so integrated now that most times, not always, but most times it's so integrated now that I don't have to be in the experience like for such a long time and repeat it, keep repeating it in my thoughts. Heck you know? Yeah, that's um, great. Yeah. So, so wow. <laughs> what I was explaining is that the BSA really kind of because this is work I do in my therapy as well but the BSA kind of gave it more gave it to me in a more baseline way you know okay. um it's it's the cognitive part of understanding what I need to do gives okay. me a list almost of yeah, okay, yeah. what are my choices and what's going to work and if and if particular things don't work like i know music doesn't work i know that doesn't work i know i know certain things that don't work and i know certain things that work in general 
but in but each situation is completely different so i go down the list to see you know what works and keep doing it like i don't stop um until i really feel like first of all that my brain's back online <laughs> okay good yeah um, but yeah so i just wanted to share that about what you know awesome. bs has done for me it's giving me a, um, a cognitive baseline of what what i can do um to um put myself back on track that's awesome and it sounds like you're able to notice what's happening within you as far as those like reactions when you drop down the ladder and um regulate your way out of it or enough to to get back to a baseline that you're happy with hey thank you so much for listening to those i hope that you found those interesting or beneficial to you so I have obviously not been uh, publishing very much. This is, It's been like a whole month, I think, since my last episode. And it's not because I don't want to or anything. Uh, my life has just been changing a lot. And I've been going through some major life shifts. Um, hopefully all for the positive, but stressful nonetheless. And as these shifts are happening, I'm also trying to get out my next course, which is called Unstucking Defensive States, which you actually heard us touch upon in this episode. So that the course is uh, done, but I only have to record it and edit it, and it's a big process. So that's kind of where all my extra time is going right now. I've been doing a lot of therapy hours, plus working uh, full time, plus you know being a dad and trying to get this course completed, recorded, edited, and published. I don't hire anybody for this. This is all like I need to know it's done. I want to I want to know that it is the best possible product. For the participants so i do everything on my own so it's just taking a while of course these these things take a while um, once it's done i'm going to get back on the content creation and start answering questions all over again and make sure that i am serving you as my audience and answering questions that you have or wh whatever comes to my mind that i want to share as well so that's what's going on lots of changes new course coming out which you can buy actually right now if you want to it's not done I will be releasing a bit at a time. And let me tell you a little bit about the course if you're interested. Again, it's called Unstucking Defensive States. The point of UDS is to build upon my other two courses, Polyvigal 101 and Building Safety Anchors. UDS takes it to the next step, which is actually how do we feel what's stuck inside of us? How do we feel our dysregulated state and allow more active ladder climbing to happen? Polyvagal 101 lays the foundational knowledge, building safety anchors builds upon that with more foundational knowledge, but also the practice of, of well, building the safety anchors of building your vagal break, your distress tolerance. Then the, the newest one, Unstucking Defensive States, is going to really address the stuck defensive state. But you kind of, I, I recommend you go in order with all these that one builds upon the last one. So you can buy it now. Like I said, it is not done. I'm going to be releasing a bit at a time as I complete it. I'll be completing it in order and then releasing the videos uh, that, that go along with each lesson. lesson. And that includes practice. Um, it's going to have some guided meditative practice things. But so all that stuff's coming, but it's just going to be a little bit at a time as fast as I can. But just so you know, it's not done right now. So that actually, it's kind of a good thing. It gives you time to catch up on Polyvagal 101 or building safety anchors if you uh, have been meaning to do those or have been putting out like you bought it and you haven't completed those yet. If you want to get all three of the trauma trilogy, then you can do so and I'll give you a hundred bucks off. So if you buy all three of them, it's $750. Each one individually, if you were to buy them separately over time is $850. But right now I'll give you a hundred bucks off if you buy the entire trilogy all at once. So go to justinlmft.com and you'll see some links for where, and plus I'll put it in the, uh, the episode description for where to go to buy the entire trilogy. And again, I'm stuck in defensive states. It's going to be a release a bit at a time, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, I, I presented it in like a beta forum to my BSA uh, attendee or participants. And then I shared that video to the ones that couldn't attend. So I got some really good feedback. And so it's a course that I'm really proud of. And I took the feedback and the critiques of the course from the people who are most likely to be taking it 
that are, are trying to deal with their stuck defensive state. And then I made some adjustments based on that feedback. So I think it's a fantastic course. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to get it out there for you. Head to justinlmft.com and you can always uh, email me if you have questions, justinlmft at gmail.com.